because they are fascinating. Is that part of the Viking or is something that you have put in or has it been found anywhere? What is it? Well, it's a big question because many people look at me at the markets, uh, the other Vikings and said to me, well, they never used the rooms. It's something you put in. But I'm not really sure. Uh, to be honest, my runes is, is made out of stones. I can show you one, just to pick one, see what that means. Uh -huh. um, like this. Uh, and that is some stones found in Iceland, by the way. I picked them myself. Um, and I'm pretty sure they did not use stones. Uh, because it would have been very, very hard for them to make the runes into the stones, and we have never found any small stones with runes on. Uh, but I am pretty sure they have used something, maybe bones, maybe wooden sticks. Um, we have a source, Tacitus, uh, from 100 after our time counting, um, and he was traveling to the north and he was talking about the, the, the people there, it's before Viking, um, but, but he was uh, telling about how people lived up in the north. And one of the things he said was there was this woman, she had some, some sticks from fruit trees and there was marks on them and she, she put them out and they read the future out of the out of this stitch. So they had something at least. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then we have some very old runic poems telling what the rune is meaning, not what they are saying, not how to, 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 to write for them, but what are they meaning? We have the Fie uh, rune, the first rune in the Futak. The Futak is uh, the, the, the line of runes. And Fie means cattle and cattle means wealth. Uh, so therefore, and the, they are written down in, in, in the medieval times so it's not in the viking times um so so therefore people say well it's much much older but i think they are based on something uh, so my idea is that they used them in some way um but i cannot say it for sure to be honest yeah okay that's really just very very interesting also another thing that people ask me for and i can't tell them now that my hands are up in the air like this and that is did the Viking have their own language? Like, did you have Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, Icelandic, or whatever? Or did you have their own language? Or did you speak individual like Swedish or Danish or Norwegian? I don't know. But did you have a language on their own or? We have the language called Old Norse. <clears throat> it's very similar to Icelandic. Mm. And uh, as far as I know, that was the, 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 the language spoken over all Scandinavia and also um, also Iceland. And uh, there had probably been some dialects, but everybody could understand each other easily. Um, and when when the, the mostly Norwegian people went to Iceland uh, in 871, <clears throat> they, they were pretty isolated. And there was that up through the years. And therefore the, the language is, has survived up there. It's of course it has uh, grown. It's it would be very easy if a Viking suddenly turned up in Reykjavik and should understand people, but people there would understand him. Um, mm. So so it's very similar to Icelandic, uh, and then the the, the language has uh, taken different directions. Uh, in Denmark, uh, we have a lot of words from English, France, German, uh, and, and, and therefore it's very uh, different from what we spoke. But if you look at the rune stones uh, that is put up, then it's, it's Old Norse. So it was the same language. Hmm. It is just very interesting because if we think about um, the sort of the image, I think that the whole world has gone about the Viking is actually killing, slaughter and raping. <laughs> That's what you say in England. Oh, it's because you all came over here, we all got raped. And I'm like, uh, what? Oh my God, it's snowing outside. Oh God, it's snowing in London. Uh, so I'm just sitting like this and going, what? You know, trying to say, well, I don't actually think it was just rape because I know for what I understand and, and what you have done for me also, they were great traders, really. They, they traded, they, they, they like the jewelry. They, they, look at the can, can I see my photograph of me and um, Gulron where she sewed me? You know, she did 
beautiful things I wear now and again representing the Vikings. I really do love it, I have to say. Um, that was you. There we are, almost like twins. <laughs> but you, 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 you showed me, as you can see, this, this lovely things that we have both got on there. And I know when I go to the Viking markets, you see many, 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 as I call it, uh, Vikings are sitting and, and they are doing a lot of sewing, they're doing a lot of weaving. Uh, some of the material is very itchy because it probably was like that in, in, in the Viking time, but also some of the jewellery is absolutely fantastic, what you see and what they could do. So I wondered, did the Viking travel around the world trading? Yes, <clears throat> we, uh, we have a lot of evidence that uh, the Vikings were traveling and they went far, far away also. <clears throat> All the stories about uh, raping, robbery, killing. It's basically because who want to tell a story about the normal people? It's not, it's, it's a boring storm, uh, story about the farmer sitting on his farm and milking his cow. Oh, it was a woman milking the cows. And, you know, nobody tells stories like that. You always hear about the rebels. You always hear about the, the unusual people. And those stories have survived. Uh, but we have evidence that the, the Vikings, they, they went to, uh, to um, Miklagor, it's uh, Byzantine, it's Istanbul, it's called in day, today. Uh, they went to England and a lot of them stayed there, got families, farms, uh, and uh, was there for, yes, still there's part of England that has names after the Vikings. Mm -hmm. um, I think Asyaria is... Uh, um, is also an old Danish word. Um, what is it from? It's from Herald um, in Danish. Mm. Went to Shire. Uh, mm. We also went to France. Uh, we went to England, no, uh, Iceland, Greenland, and then we actually went to Newfoundland. Um, so yes, we have been traveling a lot. Um, also in in uh, North East Siberia, Yakuta. There is stories about that blonde, high, blue-eyed men came there many, many, many years ago. It might have been the Vikings. So, so yes, we uh, we were really traveling around, and that was not for for robbery. It was for trading um, and find a new land to 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 stay in. When when um, the Norwegian they wanted to to go to Iceland, it was actually because they was not very good friend with the king. Um, Harald, what is it called in English? I can't remember. Hal Hofer in Danish, mm -hmm. um, and uh, therefore they 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 went to to Iceland and they get got land there and they uh, they inhabited the the country, um, Landnama. It's was it, was it called? So uh, yes, travelers and traders was mostly the Vikings, and then some robberies and some raping, just like today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. That's absolutely true. I know that I know that the, when I was a child in Denmark, I lived in Slaelse, which is about 100 kilometers away from Copenhagen in that island. And one of the places that I used to play or cycle to was Trallebo, which is a huge big uh, Viking sort of camp, if you like, this kind of thing. And uh, it is absolutely extraordinary to see the Viking camp today to how they have made it in it's almost like a museum in certain ways it's like a, uh, you know living things where you really see how the viking would have lived in those days uh, the museum or, and all the bits you can buy of the jewelry and everything else it is absolutely fantastic and it is, of course, also now a time where we have in, 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 in Denmark, and as I said before, in the whole of the Nordic countries or Scandinavia. And that is we have got meeting places where the Vikings from all over meets in Trallebo. And you have like a Viking um, marketplace, if you like, where you all are together and you can show what you can. You do your runes. But I never forget the day when I came together with a, a girlfriend of mine called Hannah and we came to visit you and we sat on a little like tree stop, I think we sat on there and we started to talk. 
and, and you suddenly said, oh, I'm, I'm a bit hungry, so I'm going to have some meat. And we went, oh, like this, and said, would you like to have some? And we said, yes. And off you slit a piece of meat and you gave it to me. And I sat there eating it. And I said, oh, that's rather nice. And then you suddenly said, yes, that was my horse. I went, pardon? She said, oh, that was my horse you'd just been eating. And I remember sitting and thinking, did she just say that I'm just eating her horse? Has she slaughtered her horse? For a minute, I could not make sense of me sitting and eating your horse. Please tell me, why did I eat your horse? Well, my horse uh, actually had three and uh, I didn't have the time for them. That was uh, one thing. And the other thing was that two of them have a kind of disease where they, the, the, the grass, their food get poisonous for them. So the one who didn't have this uh, terrible disease, I sold her. And then the two others, I, th I thought, what should I do? Should I get the vet to come here, kill them and don't just throw them away? No, I cannot just throw my friends away. Also, um, horse has a lot of good meat. So I got a butcher here and uh, we took the horses out of the stable. They did, n they did never ever found out what was going to be happened. And then the butcher shot them and uh, we slaughtered them and uh, I used the meat. Uh, it's the biggest honor in the world, I think, for my horse that I'm not throwing him away. I'm using him. And uh, this might sound weird, but I have once in a trance, not, not once, but first time in the trance, I, um, I met him. He came to me and he said to me, oh, it's so nice. It didn't hurt anymore. And do you want a, a ride? And he said, yes. And I jumped on his, his back and then we were galloping around and it was fantastic. And since then, he has been one of my uh, strongest helpers in my spiritual work. Um, for me, it's very, very important. I like to eat meat, um, but it's very important that the, 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 the animals I eat, they had a good life. Um, they need to have a good life and, and therefore I also have uh, sheep at my farm and I eat the lambs, I slaughter them myself. I don't want them to be transported a long way because it's not fair for the animal. Um, I really like to, 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 to be careful what I'm eating, that it is treated well. Yeah, it's really funny because when we were at Jim Lundgren's place, he always had lots of meat there. And he just comes in, eat meat, we Viking, we eat meat, we live on meat, we love meat, this kind of thing. And I always thought that was funny. So when you go to some of the Viking, uh, you know, markets, you will always see somebody turning some meat and you can go and slice it and you can have it. And I said, I mean, it, it, we, it is fantastic. And, you know, as I said, you know, I was sort of going, oh, my God, I've just been eating a horse. I remember that sticking in me so much, eating this horse. But I did also say, well, Gulren said it's OK. So God bless you, little horse. So it's fine. <laughs> so it's just one of the many experiences. If people say, have you ever had a horse, Mary? Yeah, yeah, part of one. Um, but then again, I have also it rain, it reindeer. So I have also been in Iceland, but you had to whale and you have had uh, all sorts of that with a big tusk and things like that from the sea you know seals uh, and everything else like that uh, so you go to a country or you go to a place where I feel if somebody presents you with raw meat uh, like you did in, 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 in Greenland you eat it you don't ask for damn pizzas you eat what they are serving in front of you because it's their tradition. So that's how I saw it, both with you and Jim Lindwell. It is your life. It is everything else like this. Yes, we can see it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm just going, yes, why not? So that was also something I learned from you, <laughs> Kulrun, I have to say. I, I have to say, sorry to say, Marion, but if you have been in Iceland, you have probably been eating horse more see times. See what I mean? Because they, you know. They, Lot of horse in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> I have been in Iceland many of times working. Uh, yes, so. No, you know, one, one of my Icelandic friends, I asked him once, well, I've been up here so many times, why do we, why do we never serve horse? And he looked at me and said, ha, if it's not chicken, if it's not um, fish, and if it's not smell of lamp, what do you think it is? I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh God, yes, absolutely. But it is like traveling. I mean, for me, it is always, if you have to go somewhere and that is being served for you, you don't turn your nose up about it. You eat it. Simple as yeah. that. You also learn from it. I think that that's absolutely fantastic. It really is. Now, Gurun, we have only got about 10 minutes left or less now. You said yeah. something about your runes. What is yeah. it you want to be done? I want to uh, to drag a rune for you. And I think first we might start with Annette. Yeah. Yeah. Annette, I will take a rune for you and tell you what the rune says, uh, and it will be an advice for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. This rune here, you can see it. Yes, yeah. thank you. It's called Madur. And uh, Madur means that um, you have a lot of people around you who really wants to help you, but they are not able to read your mind. So ask for help, say it out loud, because they they are there for you, they will gladly help you, but they don't know what you need help for. Ask for it. Thank you. You're welcome. And Bo, now I have a room for you. We'll see what you will say. Uh -huh. This is a rune called Tyr, and uh, okay. Tyr is a rune that talks about courage, about loyalty. You have to be loyal to yourself. Uh, you don't let anybody step on you. And you have to have the courage to believe that you are good enough exactly the way you are. Because you are. Uh, find your own uh, worth. And if you sometimes do not really believe in yourself, don't believe you're good enough, then you just look at this, the arrow pointing up. Um, every time you see an arrow pointing up, you should say to yourself, I am good enough exactly the way I am, and nobody, nobody should be allowed to step upon me. Fantastic. I'll do that. <laughs> and then, Marion, for you? Yes, darling. I'm yeah. ready. Back, so I'm not, I cannot see what I'm dropping. <laughs> have for you patience. Ease is it called. Is Ease that? means ice. You need to be more patient. Really? Nothing, nothing is going in a rush. Uh, things take the time it takes and it's okay. Um, I see the picture. You're standing in front of a frozen lake. You want to get to the other side. If you do as you like, you would run through the over over the, the lake and, and you don't know if the ice is safe so you might might fall through the ice take one step instead feel is the ice safe then another step is the ice safe and then the third step and suddenly you are on the other side but it takes time so patience is for you Thank you very much. How actually quite accurate things are, I have to say. I am one and I will admit it. I have got no patience. Things have to happen tomorrow, not today. It's gonna it's gonna happen not tomorrow. It's gonna happen now, please. Yeah. No, so that's really lovely. I think how interesting to actually end up with a room and the things that you do and your healing ability and your skull, the blowing, uh, you know, your belief in everything. And of course I can go on with you for ages too, because I would like to know of your gods, because you have so many beautiful gods, Odin, Tor, and things like that. What do you mean? And also Jim Lukman, he's got his own temple for, is it Odin he's got, or is it Tor? It's, so, it's Odin, yes, it's yes. Odin. Yeah, we, 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 could, we could talk for hours, it's true, but now we have to go to the, the spiritual things, so therefore I think we chose uh, this. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. About it. But it's still interesting to see the gods you have got. I think it's, 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 it's fascinating, and also, you know, the, the animals, the birds, and so forth. So yeah. I really and have enjoyed, and hope the world who's watching this have been a little bit more enlightened 
upon yeah. uh, the Vikings, the horses to eat, the things you sing, all sorts of things like that. I think that, that is extremely important for everybody to know that we have got the Vikings within the Nordic countries and it is a fantastic saga reality and everything else like that. So, and also what is very interesting to see today, it happens to be in Denmark also, is to see the children born into this world today with Viking names. True, yeah. I find that really interesting. Odin, Tor, Freya, whatever you have got, you see the names everywhere. There was one thing I think that I forgot to say with the Seder, which also is important and very interesting. That is when I go into a trance in the Seder, I use song. Yes, I do. Just like the mediums does. Exactly. So that was also one of the red threads. And that is just the music is everything to, to me as a medium. The lifting of the vibration for the music, for the voice. We have to use our voice to be able to connect in that's where I found the fascination with you. When I, you know, when we all had to go around dancing and singing and lifting the vibration, you started and there was all sort of thing, such a similarity. So I would like to thank you for being with us here in, I say in England, which I will take this little thing here. And if I just turn it a little, London is having its first snow. It's snowing. I can't, I can't believe it. Sitting and talking with a Viking and we get snow, <laughs> which is a little bit unheard of in England. Or I would say London, it's snowing, but it's actually laying itself. You can see that it's really big and it looks beautiful. So and I also want to thank you to invite me here because I, uh, I think this has been very, very interesting. And I think it's very good that people get... Um, enlightened about what we're doing and not only a helmet with horns on so <laughs> and it's not to drink out of that's all I would say absolutely not so thank you very much indeed for you being here it's an honor for me to have you really it is it's fantastic we're on and uh, who knows we might get another thing out of you we might find something else we can talk about well so, we could make one with only about the Asatru and the gods. I <laughs> think. Yeah, but we will see. I just think that it's fantastic. Why not? We'll yeah. make a date in the future and we would definitely do that. So yes. thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. And then. Thank <laughs> yes, okay. Thank you, Marian. Thank you, Victoria. No, I'm saying Victoria. Huron, sorry. It was fantastic listening to all the stories again and uh, thank you for the reading for uh, about my room um it was just hammered on his head on the head it was just directly direct, it's true uh, so thank you very much for that and if uh, some of our listeners or viewers want to get in contact with you is that, that okay that i will write your um your contact information, or do you have a, a website where they can come in and see and read about you? Of course. Uh, my website is right now under construction, but I have an email. I also have Facebook. Um, so, of course, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, oh, do you have anything? Uh, when will this be up? Right soon on YouTube? You're the manager of the, the Mayans uh, International YouTube channel. Yes, it will get up right away in a short time. Yes, thank you then. <laughs> and next time we will have uh, another special guest, man, that will be your friend, Rikke Brust, uh, and we will talk about television and how you met her. And later on we have another appointment with uh, the author of one of your first books, or some of the two first books, I believe, uh, Charlotte Keeler. And so... See you next time, everybody, and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Okay,